you know, the cost of everything going up, people are looking for affordable housing. People a lot of times think passive income is truly always passive and they have to do nothing at all and they end up losing money. All I need is somebody who's got the time, the desire and the willingness to go out there and do these things. I got the money. Like, I'll lend the money on this. As a great investor, you have to be able to buy different investments and think differently. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Another week, another wealth webinar where we're going to teach you how to be the bank and how money really works. And today I'm honored to have Christy join us. And it was kind of a last minute thing. We were like, oh my God, we got to talk about mobile home parks. And she agreed to come on and teach that today. And then what we're going to do at the end, you got to stay to the end, is we're going to basically bring it all together, show you how the two of these can come together with you being your own bank. But real quick, before we dive in, how many of you know somebody that's lived in a mobile home park, maybe grew up in a mobile home park, in the chat right now, just put M, uh, put mobile home, M-H, instead of spelling it all out. Let's just have M-H. Perfect. Okay, so I'm not alone. Growing up, I didn't grow up in a mobile home park, but I spent most of my childhood in a mobile home park. My grandparents, my uh, grandpa, my dad's parents, uh, they lived in a mobile home park their entire life. And they would always bring me over there. I loved cruising around the mobile home park on my BMX. And it's kind of funny, like now, looking back, back then, I mean, all I was looking for is like, what can I jump my bike off? And I developed some friends in, in that park and we would ride bikes together. And as we got older, we just kind of did all that stuff together. And, you know, eventually like, heck, I was going to some parties in mobile home parks. But I remember during that period of time, I remember this particular mobile home park, which was called the Village, expanding. And I would, I'd be riding my bike or my skateboard around, and I'd always remember they were always putting more units in. They were always putting new roads in. And I, I could never understand that. I'm like, wow, you know, why do they keep adding? But I certainly understand it today. And today, now I haven't been through the village lately, but there's another mobile home park just around the corner. Today, that mobile home park and the village are interconnected. I think they're actually one and there are, I think, thousands of units in there. It has gotten to be huge. So the, the real story to that is, what if you could have owned that mobile home park back then? I mean, that was back in the 80s. You know, what if you owned it then? What would that be worth today? But we can't ever go backwards. So we always got to be looking forward. And the only time that matters is right now. Now, you hear me talk a lot about what could potentially be coming. And that's a recession. Some of you already know we're in a recession, but the folks over there in Washington like to, you know, change the terminology of what defines a recession. So by their new definitions, we're not in a recession yet. But if you're looking for places to put money, if you're looking for ways to recession proof your portfolio, then I think you're really going to like this and we're going to bring it all together. So Christy, let me turn it over to you and put you up on the screen so you can teach us because I got a lot to learn here. Okay, cool. Um, I have a presentation. Do you just want me to kind of go through some slides on that and then we can kind of sure. just Let talk me, off uh, the cuff? Absolutely. Let me just give you the ability to share. Okay, cool. And I'm looking in the chat box. I see some awesome stuff. I see somebody saying they're non-existent in Hawaii. Um, what's cool is I've actually worked with some Hawaiian investors that have bought in the States. Don't think, oh my gosh, just because they're not in my backyard, I can't do this. That's completely untrue. There's lots of markets with manufactured and mobile homes. That just comes down to finding great property management, right? And finding a team that knows where to find the right deals. Um, so don't discount those. Somebody said mobile homes aren't as mobile these days, right? And mobile home parks. Um, it's it's really cool, guys. I came across mobile homes in 2007, and that's actually when I started investing, which seems like yesterday, but now when I really think about it, that was a really long time ago. <laughs> as I'm going through this, I want you to think about mobile homes as really a cash cow and a different alternative in real estate. A lot of times, you know, back in 2007, all I heard was houses, single family homes, flipping, wholesaling, and we all know what happened at the market at that time. Well, during that time period, I was still doing that with houses, but I came across a great read, um, which I'll talk a little more about, and I'm going to go ahead and actually pull up my presentation. Um, there is a gentleman by the name of Lonnie Scruggs. I don't know if any of you have ever 
um, come across him or a book of his, but I recommend if you have not, please, please, please buy that book. It's an awesome book called Deals on Wheels. It's a super simple book. Lonnie was kind of the pioneer of mobile homes and he didn't necessarily teach um, just buying mobile homes. He actually came across them because he was doing a deal and somebody gave him a free mobile home as part of the deal. So once he started doing it, he was like, okay, wait, there's something to this business. Why is no one talking about it? And of course, nowadays we know that Warren Buffett um, holds mobile home parks, mobile homes. So, I mean, if Warren's doing it, there's probably something to that, right? And I think that's when everybody started to catch wind and kind of come you know, full circle on the mobile homes. So I really came around thinking like, I lived in Florida at the time in 2007 and I was driving around and I was seeing all of these amazing parks and homes and the two gentlemen that mentored me at that time, I literally said, hey, I think there's something to these mobile homes. Like, you know, what do you think? They're like, absolutely not. Stay away from them. They're depreciating assets. They're not good investments. And they really couldn't necessarily give me a reason why, because when I ran the numbers, they made sense. And I wasn't at that time owning parks, guys. I was literally just looking at the pure buying the home in someone else's park or maybe buying a home on land. So when I looked at that aspect of it, I was like, all of this just makes sense. Um, and at that time also, banks were financing mobile homes, but they, they use something, and I'll talk a little more about that, called chattel loans. So it's more of like a high interest loan on just the home alone, because a lot of times when you're buying them in parks, you don't own the land. It wasn't really ideal necessarily if you weren't gonna live in them to do that, but what I started finding is financing has come full circle, and there's many now lenders that will finance mobile homes on land and in parks. So a lot of that has changed over the years since 2007. But I kept thinking there's something to this. I was marketing, I was coming across leads, and I felt like I was getting a ton of questions from people. So I started exploring more. Now, remember back in that era, there wasn't a lot of internet-based education on mobile homes. I was Googling, and what's funny is I came across, there was something called the Meeting of the Minds, and it was in Troy, Alabama. I still remember, and my business partner at the time, I said, listen, we're going to this. And she's like, we're going to Alabama. Are you crazy to go like learn about these mobile homes? I said, well, I am, you know that. And I'm crazy about learning, so let's go. And when I went, I started you know, realizing, gosh, there's a lot of people buying parks and this is a whole different aspect I didn't think about. So I really just wanna walk you through the basics of this because Chris teaches you where to put your money and what to use it in. And I wanna teach you that these are vehicles that you can use, but what makes this a good investment and what does that look like? And when you come across something, how do you really evaluate that? So I'll touch on some of the main points um, and I'll kind of go through these. I know not super fast, but a little quick because it's a lot of information. Um, and I know we have only about an hour and 15 minutes, but what's the difference between mobile, manufactured and modular, right? Like we hear this terminology, we hear trailers, we hear this all interchangeable. And it's like, I don't understand why these, you know, have different names to them. How do we determine the values? How do we estimate repairs? For those of you that have not been in a manufactured or mobile home, I suggest you go in one. I suggest you go in the nastiest, grossest, oldest one, and I suggest you go into a brand new one and see the difference. Um, you'll see that there's different materials used. So sometimes not knowing like how to estimate, you know, am I getting a licensed contractor? What am I doing? You know, what are the must knows and what exactly can we do with them? Can we truly flip them? Can we wholesale them? Or do we just have to buy and hold? Because some of this, you know, some of you on here might be looking at different strategies. If you're looking out of your state, you might say, listen, I don't really want to flip something because I don't live in that state. But hey, if I picked up another great rental, why not? So the difference between the three, a mobile home is more of like a trailer when you think of that. That's in a park. A lot of those are found in parks. Actually, my business partner just drove over to Darlington about an hour ago and she was looking at a mobile home that has a title, which we'll talk about that, like a vehicle VIN number car title. And she said, hey, this is a great deal on this home, but guess what? I just checked the VIN number and nothing matches up. This title is not for this mobile home, even though they're selling it, it's not the correct home. So there's some weird nuances with that. Um, they're usually found on concrete blocks. You can move them. That's why they're called mobile, right? You can transport them to different spots. Now, manufactured homes are different only for the sake hud came in and had different guidelines on june 15th 1976 and said listen we want to build these to better standards they have a bad rap we kind of just threw them together in the factory prior to this we really want to have 
a set protocol to these. So people are more likely to buy them and we can really grow this industry. So everything after that date, and if you learn anything on this, just write down that date, June 15th, 1976, because after that point, you can actually get financing on mobile homes. Anything prior to that is very hard to, if to none, get financing. So if you're looking to resell them, it could be difficult, right? Because you're only dealing with cash buyers. Um, but there's HUD sticker plates on them and they have to also be connected to utilities and inspected by the county that they're within. Modular homes, when you think of those, those are actual real houses, single family homes. They are actually held to the same standards as stick built homes. A code inspector has to come in and approve them. So know that with modular homes, that's a whole different animal. Those are comped out with single family homes. I'm not saying don't do them, but really I don't talk a lot about them because they are the typical single family home. Now, for most of you, you've seen a single wide. Um, unfortunately, on the news, a lot of times in the spring and fall, you see that a lot of them have blown away in tornadoes and hurricanes. Another reason people stay away from them because it scares them. They think, oh gosh, like they're just tornado and hurricane magnets. Um, but mobile homes or trailers are typically single wides. 14 by 80 is your common size. That's an older model um, mobile home. And it's single wide, meaning one piece. When you look at double wide, that means two pieces, two double, right? Get it now? So that's two single wides put together with a center beam in the middle where it's connected. These are larger, and a lot of times you'll see these more so on land or in larger, nicer communities. And a lot of these nowadays look literally like a very, very nice home. If you haven't been in them, please go check them out. Um, I'm starting to actually see, I just read an article that the that mobile homes are really not depreciating as much anymore they're really now actually appreciating especially the ones connected to land so if you're looking for an asset that has a better appreciation find a double wide that actually is attached to the land that's considered real property when it's detitled so that now is um, kind of a debunked myth that they're depreciating assets now there's some must knows on this um, HUD tags and data plates those are located on the manufactured homes, you can find them on the exterior. Those are typically also in the interior of the home you'll see um, on the inside of the electrical plate or kitchen cabinet that gives a breakdown of the home what wind zone you're in all of this is really important. Uh, wind zone is very, very important because if it is a coastal property, it can be moved inland, but if it was uh, an inland wind zone, it cannot be moved to the coast because it's not set to hurricane standards. So when you're moving these homes county to county, it's really important. I get lots of calls when we do some mobile home marketing. Hey, I'm looking for a home to go in Myrtle Beach. Okay, great. Well, I already know like half the homes that I'm finding in my area, I'm in Columbia, South Carolina, are not going to be able to move coastal because they are not held to those guidelines. However, if somebody has one in Myrtle Beach for sale, I can actually move it to Columbia. So that's important to know. Is it real property or chattel? Again, that is very, very important. Um, you'll see MLS listings that come across, you know, mobile home, not detitled. And it's like, well, what the heck does that mean? Half the time the agent has no clue what it means. Um, so you really, you need to understand the nuances. Don't rely on someone else. Know exactly what you're doing, just like any piece of real estate or investing that you do. Know all the facts so you know you're making the right decisions and investments. How to locate or pull comps. That's very important and sometimes that's tricky because you're going, hey, I've got a mobile home and I get this all the time. It's out in the middle of nowhere. How do I know the value of that? Just like a single family home, if I can't find comps on the MLS and my agent isn't able to pull them, then I'm going to get an appraisal. Same thing done on my manufactured homes. Now, how do I get the value of a single wide mobile home in a park? Because a lot of times those are cash deals hand to hand, right? So how do I know what someone's willing to pay? A lot of that comes down to marketing to see in your market what someone will pay. True story. Um, we are getting mobile homes currently in our market for, you know, three to $8,000, which sounds crazy. You're probably like, what in the heck does that thing look like when you buy it and who in the world is buying it? So what we're finding is so many people are looking for affordable housing and living. Those same, same houses we can find for that price may need a little work, may need little to no work. We're actually able to resell those to individual home buyers cash for anywhere up to 30 grand. So that's a really quick, easy transaction that we're able to make, which is awesome. So why am I fighting every other investor in the market for houses when I can go 
for mobile homes, right? Now, now a lot of people are catching on to this, but there's still a lot of opportunity out there because a lot of these investors haven't educated themselves in knowing what to do with the mobile home. So they end up finding a deal, but they don't know how to get rid of it. They don't know how to comp it out. So it also leaves a lot of opportunity. Local city, county regulations and rules. Those are changing daily. And I literally mean daily because of trailers and mobile homes having such a bad rap, a lot of cities and counties are getting rid of them. So if you have a home that's already on the ground there, a lot of times it's better to leave it than to move it because they might have you grandfathered in. And if you go moving things, they may not allow you to move them back. So you wanna get them really good with your city and county offices. Now there's different buying paperwork, right? If you're buying a mobile home that's been detitled, you're going to then, um, and it's attached to land, it's actually going to be considered real property. You're gonna have um, a deed on that. You're actually gonna close with that with a title company or closing attorney. And if you go back to just a mobile home that's in a park on a title, it's like a vehicle in most states. So you're actually going to go to the DMV, which sounds crazy. I just helped somebody transact a house um, that they sold to someone or they were, I'm sorry, excuse me, they were buying from someone for 35 grand. And she said, where should I meet them to transact this? I have a 35 grand cash. Like I'm a little worried about this because I'm just getting this title. Is this real? I said, yes, it's legitimately real. Like that's how it works. She said, well, I don't want to get robbed. I said, yes, definitely go to the bank, meet them at the bank, go through the whole process. But it just seems a little crazy. Like I'm buying this whole entire home on this title and we're trading money. Is that legal? I feel like it's something weird to it. So there's different paperwork you're going to use with the bill of sale and different things that identify and allow you to be able to sell those. I mean, some of that stuff is stuff I'd never heard of, you know, in terms of the different types. But um, I, I certainly know there's more and more of these popping up. I, I know in our area, you know, when they want to expand or put new ones in, it's very difficult to get the, the approval from the towns to do it. And what I've seen is a lot of the folks that own the mobile home parks, like they're older. Uh, you know, there's one kind of right down the road from the office and I look at it every day and it's an older park and I've driven through it. It's kind of beat up. And I, I'm always thinking, man, I should just make these people an offer to buy this. Um, it just seems like that's the way to go. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, how would I ever raise the money to buy this? How would I ever do that? I mean, that's what private money clubs all about. I mean, back a while ago, we, we did a fund, uh, West coast income, and we did another one safari and they were designed for mobile home parks. We couldn't buy enough mobile home parks to fully place all the funds in it. So we diversified it, but that was a, a really fun run where we got some mobile home parks, worked with Chris Rude on that. So that's kind of what I, my experience is with it. It's always something that I'd love to lend on because it's a really stable asset. It's just, I've never really, it, it just seems like nobody's ever raising money for mobile home parks or good operators that I see. And then I always am thinking, okay, well, are the banks financing all of these? But then I, I heard from Chris Rude not long ago that the banks have really pulled back on lending money on mobile home parks. So these are just different things that go through my head as I listen to you talk. No, this is good. Can you see my screen now? Now we can, yes. Okay, I'm just going to go through them like this instead of pulling it full force. I don't know why. It's something to have to do with Google Chrome and Safari. <laughs> They're trying to stop me. That's why they don't want you to know about all these fancy mobile and manufactured homes. Um, you're 100% right on those parks. There are, like, I would say the bulk of people in our area, now they're starting to get bought out. Um, a lot of them are mom and pop type parks. And I say mom and pop because usually the husband and wife built the park. And then the wife did the books, the husband managed the homes, he did the repairs, all of that good stuff. And then unfortunately what's happening is they're now a baby boomer age and one of their health is declining, which now leads to the park deteriorating and somebody coming in and buying. There aren't a lot of banks that I found that will finance. So a lot of this is done through private money, owner financing, some of that creative stuff. But it's great. Like you said, hey, if it was a great asset and it made sense, I'd love to lend on it. That's exactly what we do. Along the way, we've taken a lot of our lenders that started with us on single family homes and said, hey, listen, you know, the market you know, like what happened during COVID? It was so hard to find any deals because everybody was going on the MLS. I mean, we were getting outbid. So I literally went to a lot of my lenders and said, listen, this is not, I don't feel like this is the best time to put your money into some of these deals because everybody's overpaying. However, we've got some tremendous buy and hold opportunities, right? That you could lend on. And you've been lending to us for over 15, 20 years. Would you consider doing that? Absolutely, right? They just want their money working. I said, I don't feel good putting your money somewhere 
And then I also don't feel good giving you back your money to sit there and do nothing. So like, let's explore some different opportunities. So a lot of when this was going on with COVID, um, I was buying a lot of mobile homes on land because I was seeing the values go up and up. And it's like, these are flipping just like houses, but for some reason, nobody's going after them. It's changed a little. Now there's a lot of people going after them. But key relationships you have in the business, again, like you said, with the mobile home parks, you know, initially my thought was, I'm going to buy the whole park, right? Because I like to go big or go home. It was like, if I'm going to buy this, I have all these little tiny houses. And if I own those, that would be amazing. And even if the people pay lot rent, that's amazing too. I'm getting money regardless. But then when I started breaking things down, it was like nobody that, if you know nothing about buying a mobile home, don't go buy a whole park just because you have the money. Like anything, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So you need to learn slowly and kind of build your way up. So making relationships with park managers actually indirectly down the line, we ended up buying parks because we started finding owners that were older that needed to sell. So it actually, we learned the small part of the business into the bigger part. And I think mobile home parks are amazing. I'm actually going to look at another one on Friday that a gentleman bought um, from someone and he thought, hey, I'm going to fix this thing up. I'm going to dump some money into it. And actually what ended up happening is he's done nothing for four years. <laughs> so he's now motivated. And I'm thinking this could be a great owner finance situation. So build those relationships with movers. A lot of our deals come from our mobile home mover that we work with. You have to have a good mover that's licensed and insured. And this gentleman, Daniel is his name that we work with. He brings us a lot of deals that we actually end up wholesaling or flipping. Um, so he's a great steady stream built in a marketing relationship mobile home inspectors, mobile home supply stores. When I say supply stores, um, that means the place where the actual materials are distributed. So it's like your lows of mobile homes, but it's usually again, a small mom and pop type store that you can go in and buy. And then lenders who specialize in manufactured homes. That's huge because what we're finding is a lot of times when I would be flipping and selling a manufactured home on land, I would find out that all of a sudden my buyer and my agent would put that buyer with a lender that didn't know anything about manufactured homes. So the deal would fall through, even though it was a great deal, all the comps pulled out, everything makes sense. They didn't know the different financing nuances. So it's important to have that team of people that really understand what's going on. Now I'm going to kind of go through here and talk about renting out a mobile home in someone's park and wholesaling mobile homes. That seems to be like the biggest bulk of what we're doing now. Now we're still flipping things, obviously, but I'm, I'm really picky choosy about anything that we do. We just actually closed on a single family home that was built in the early 1900s and it's an old historic area. And we found that on the MLS, but we negotiated that and got it at the right price. I'm just seeing investors jump on everything that's there because it's there. And when you're doing that, you're making a bad decision. And I feel the same way about mobile homes. So I like to diversify and kind of go out. But I've also looked at the need in our market. And I found that what's happening because of the market, a lot of people that have owned land for a very long time are now coming in and getting mobile homes to put on their land to create extra cash flow. So they always thought they'd do it, they never did it, but now that they're going like, okay, how can I create this additional stream of income? So what I'm finding is there's a lot of, of just individuals out there, and I'll say they're cash buyers, but really they're homeowners that have land and, and have an extra septic tank and well. So they're saying, hey, if I can buy this mobile home for 15 grand and I can rent it for anywhere up to a thousand bucks, this is a great investment, right? The return on investment's huge. So, finding mobile homes that are cheap that need to be moved or finding a mobile home park that has vacant homes in it or ones maybe that has vacant spaces that you can move homes into now remember when you don't own the park you're going to be paying the park uh owner or manager a lot rent and you need to really check these parks out and see what the heck is included in lot rent right what does that look like because that can be really high high lot rent can be the killer of your cash flow um, has it changed ownership recently? We had this, ask me how I know, we had this experience where we bought with a mom and pop and we had guaranteed lot rents. Everything was fabulous until guess what? They sold the park to a huge hedge fund. That hedge fund came into our market and started raising all of the lot rents to almost like a Florida-based lot rent, which made zero sense in Columbia, South Carolina. It was like they they basically knew, unfortunately, a lot of these people that had been in this park a very long time couldn't move their homes 
So they knew they were at the mercy of the park. It was like they either pay the lot rent or the park ends up taking over their homes and they get it, which is is really kind of bad. So you wanna make sure you're buying and you have a lease agreement in place with any park that you work in. And does the park allow renters? This is big. A lot of parks have gotten rid of renters because they say, oh, they didn't pay. They didn't take care of the park. I had this bad issue. I don't even like to work with investors in my park because I had this investor one time and I had a, a bad time with them. So you need to really nurture that relationship with park owners. Um, but what I like about this is it's a simple way to start. So if you've got, you know, you don't need Unlike single family homes and other investment properties, you don't need $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 to invest in these mobile homes. If you have 10, 15, 20 grand just, just sitting around in your policy or around, I mean, this is a lot of people. Um, you need to do something with this. And this is a great opportunity to. You're not responsible for the park maintenance and their ca great cash flow. So I'll give you an example of one um, that we have bought in the past and just recently. These are pretty accurate to numbers right now. Rents actually have gone up much more. Um, but buying a mobile home in someone else's park, three bedroom, one and a half bath, purchase price, 10 grand, monthly lot rent, 625. The lot rent of the park, 325. And of course, if you're not going to manage it yourself, be prepared to pay 8 to 10% to a property management company. But this essentially is your cash flow per month. So on a $10,000 investment, right? Like, I mean, and now rents have gone. I mean, some of these that started at this are up in the $900,000 range. Rents are ridiculous right now, even in the manufactured to mobile homes. Can you wholesale mobile homes? The answer is 100%. Yes, you can. Um, so we had an out-of-state and buyer I knew that needed to sell, right? Like we nurture these relationships. We find people with homes in different parks that need to sell and that are motivated. And we basically negotiate with them a price to then resell their property to another investor or a retail buyer. So it's a great opportunity. Now, when these homes are in parks, you are paying monthly lot rent. So if your tenant isn't paying rent, you're on the hook for the lot rent. So if you don't have good management in place and you aren't great at vetting your tenants, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. People a lot of times think, Passive income is truly always passive and they have to do nothing at all. It's like, I'm just going to buy the property. This property management company said they would do it. This is going to be great. And they end up losing money. So a lot of times, unfortunately, we target investors like that, that bought investments that aren't performing and we're able to kind of come in and help them out of their situation, but in turn, help another investor purchase or a new homeowner. So we were able to do that in a park and buy this specific one. Um, and kind of go in and do. So that worked out to be a great wholesale situation. Now fix and flip, because a lot of times we think like, okay, can we really fix this mobile home and flip it like we would a house? And the answer is absolutely yes, which is super cool. We're finding out too that a lot of our comps are super high and really almost mirror some of the single family homes, not that much less. And what we've been able to do really is we research our best zip codes, our best school districts, like we do with single family homes. And because a lot of people wanna send their kids to school in that area, but aren't able to afford a single family home, right? And they don't wanna rent because rents are ridiculous. They still wanna buy. We actually go in and find a mobile home to flip to them and what they're able to do is still have home ownership but be below the single family price which has worked out to be a great strategy when you're able to find these homes so you can see the numbers of where we purchased this home and just looking at this so chris i know you said like growing up you were in manufacturing and mobile homes and i don't know if they looked you know nice or what they look like but this one was a great dated. very dated. yeah Not yeah as, it wasn't as big as that that looks like a double wide that is, you're right. It was probably a single wide, right? Which are which are very small. Some are bigger, but this is this is a double wide, and this one had just pets in it. It was pretty gross, honestly. Now the subfloors in these homes are pretty disgusting. You'll find that a lot of times if somebody had pets in there, they had a water leak. It's more like particle board, and it just really disintegrates. So we a lot of the repairs in this home were just kind of going in and replacing subfloors. Now, when you look at this bathroom, this is like a Lowe's bathroom, right? I don't go in and recreate the wheel. We have our same template for everything. We're able to go in and move in, same vanities, same mirrors, all of that good stuff. We use Lowe's in-stock kitchen cabinets, Home Depot if you love them. And then we just respray the bathtubs and the big garden tubs. People love those, the garden tubs and the showers. 
So really it's cost effective and quick to get in. And what's great about these guys is like with single family homes, that old historic home I told you we're doing, we're gonna have to go through so much permitting. I mean, it's gonna be ridiculous, right? The profit makes sense on it, but it's in a historic neighborhood. So we have to abide by historic rules and regulations. We have to get everything checked by the inspector. When you're doing a manufactured home, you can literally just go in. I don't have to pull any permits to do any of this because it's really truly only cosmetic. So that saves a lot of time and a lot of cost. And when you look at this, it's like, ta-da! What I've done here is you'll see most of these manufactured homes are split up by an awful countertop. I go in and just kind of recreate it. And if you didn't know any better and I showed you this, you would assume probably this was a single family home. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're going for the look of something that looks just like a house. So when people are searching on the MLS, even though they may see manufactured home, they think this looks like a house. And that's where I want people to think I'm buying a home, not I'm buying, I couldn't afford a house. So I had to buy a mobile home, right? That's what people used to think. I really want it to look great. So same thing with this one. Now this one um, was interesting because another investor that I work with locally had this listing. So you're probably thinking like, why would he not have bought that? What's funny guys is he sends me manufactured homes daily he doesn't like to invest in them for some reason he has that stigma he has no interest in investing in those so he sends everything to me now when you go down here and you look you see the kitchen before just dated you know they have that panel board with the wallpaper it just looks ugh. but when you go back in and see what we did it's kind of hard to believe it's the same house just opening up the floor plan and just repainting just like we would a house we're doing nothing different right that's the same place can you believe it? You want to buy one, don't you? I knew it. <laughs> oh, that looks badass. Literally, right? like I would have, I, I literally would have thought that was superimposed. I mean, that's clean. And the thing that's so cool about this one, it had like a double living room. It's, it's probably like in square footage wise, bigger than most houses. And what's crazy is right behind these manufactured homes, it attaches and backs up to a housing community. So literally it had a little more land with it. So it was more desirable from that aspect too. And I think that's another thing people are really getting after now because, you know, everybody after COVID wanted to be out in the country and have land. God forbid we're kind of shoved up and stuck again. We have this opportunity. Now, this one you'll see is kind of funny. The master tub had carpet around it. Why would you do that? It's horrible. We didn't remove any of that. We came in and put new vanities and we resurfaced the garden tub. So super simple. Um, most of our budgets in these are anywhere from 30 to 40,000 on our uh, ones we're flipping. I'll tell you on our single wides that we're doing and like renovating just to keep his rentals. I do travel nurses. So we actually rent some of our mobile homes to travel nurses. Um, we're probably 15 grand or below in budget if it's a single wide. So also you're not dumping a ton of money into some of these, um, but that gives you an idea. We did, it had underpinning before we brick that to make it more like a home, but that kind of gives you an idea of what, what we do. Yeah, just, just like making, bringing new. mobile homes back. It's like a whole new way of looking at renovations when you're looking at it for the mobile homes. I mean, like all these photos are great. Go back to that bathroom one. I mean, like the before and afters. I mean, come on. I mean, that this looks, one that looks better than most flips out there. It does. That's the thing. And you know what's funny? I always put like the best picture first on the MLS and we had agents taking clients to see it and they would get there and they're like, Wait, oh, it's a, it's a it's a man. Yeah. Like I thought it was a house and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper. So like that's what's so cool about this because i know if you're in real estate i promise you've come across the mobile home lead at some point and i think you just need to know there is opportunity to do this right like what are you doing stop waiting the deals are out there um i would say as many single family homes as we do we do probably double or triple that mobile homes a month because they're easier you might have hit this but i was kind of just answering questions like how do you finance all the mobile homes that you guys are finding so good question. So if it's a home on, well, we have a lot of private money, right? And I will tell you this, you know, a lot of our private money. So if it's a house on land and it's detitled, it's real property. So you have a deed so we can do everything like we do, pri you know, private money wise, they're, they're secured by the property. So there's no worries. We're buying a below market value. So a lot of it's private money, home equity line, right? All the things we teach about doing different ways. Um, if it's an individual home, 
So if you're starting off and you're saying like, I don't have any money to get into this, which I'm going to guess most people have five or 10,000. Okay. And if you don't, guess what? That comes down to creative financing, owner financing subject to these strategies work as well. Um, but a lot of ours are private money when we're purchasing them. And like, what are your, what are, you, what are the terms you're usually doing for the private money? So it depends. So if it's a regular fix and flip, obviously we do an annual, we'll do our 12 month like we do. We'll do eight to 10% depending on our lender. And most of my lenders, like they don't want their money back. That's the truth. As I soon know. as I cash I them out, you know, you know how that works, Chris. That's why I was like, you know what? So on some of these, just to tell you, like we bought a duplex with a mobile home on it and we actually took one of our private lenders and did a longer term hold with them so we might cash out refi two years five years i don't know it just depends on the lender some of them might hold them longer i mean really they're just looking for the return and we have a proven track record so that obviously helps um and a lot of them only lend to us so the reality is it's like if they're not lending to anyone else, their money's sitting. So I have this great mobile home opportunity. And our mobile homes really, you can justify it by what's selling here. Breaking news, this just in. Are you sick of having your money lying around not doing anything? Well, we've got the solution for you. PrivateMoneyClub.com. Back to you, Chris. Yeah, like th like that one that you were showing photos on. Like, how much would something? Did you, how much would you buy something like that for? I mean, I'm sure it varies, but you know, what would be the purchase price? What would be the renovation cost? Like, how much all in are you on something like that? Right. So, if we really market well, so if I throw out marketing and I'll do different direct mailers. So here's here's the interesting thing with the mobile and manufactured homes you're even getting a different vibe with everything you do so you know this if you've marketed during COVID, everybody was direct mailing cold calling this people are like mad stop calling me i'm getting 25 calls with the manufactured homes it's crazy it's more like oh thank you yes i'd love to sell it's a different feeling because they're like i've had this mobile home it's it's been paid off for 10 years um you know i let my daughter move in and they tore it up it's just sitting even the ones on land so to give you an idea sumter south carolina i have a guy that i coach that's doing um some finding deals and he found an older it's like an early 70s model beautiful i can't even believe how pristine the condition is the mom lived in it unfortunately had dementia moved in with the kids almost five years ago the house has just been sitting on five acres of land we actually are getting that under contract for thirty thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars a whole on yes and i told noah i'm like i don't even think we should sell this maybe we should keep it as a rental and i'm like i don't want to move to sumter but it's got five acres with it it's on a well it's on a septic tank and they build an addition, a nice porch. I mean, it's a beautiful, I'm like, where can someone even buy a home like this? You can't, I mean, it's crazy. You should see the house I just sold. You know, it, it's a house I've owned as a rental for many years. We bought it in 2014. I think I paid 29,000 for it. I put very little into it. I mean, maybe all in over the entire time, eight, nine grand wow. to renovate it. And we just had the tenant move out, which was, amicable i mean and then we we just did a quick cleanup and sold it for 121 so i mean you're talking about you know excuse my language but like a little shit box nowhere near close what you just posted photos even in the even the befores but i'm just looking at like my god i mean i'm always going private money club because obviously i just want to lend i don't want to own anymore but if people are out there finding these deals posting them on private money club let's say they were looking to raise 30 grand and then they needed another i mean how much would a renovation like that one cost so this one which is crazy chris i'm literally going to say four thousand. i mean it does not need that much it mostly just needs to be cleaned out like literally she got it's it i walked in and i'm like there's a christmas tree up but she hasn't been here five years and she just went downhill that fast around christmas they were like we don't want to deal with it they're like literally like we just didn't even go back and the reason the husband is like i'm super motivated because i have to cut the grass <laughs> he's like so i have to come over to this five acres and deal with this like please buy this home and I'm thinking, number one, like, why has nobody bought this before? This is insane. You know, but that's that's about 45 minutes from us, right? But we can buy stuff like that in Columbia. So we're buying on land even, I'd say 40, 45,000, maybe 20,000 renovation on the high end, 25. But it's, I mean, people have cash to buy. That's what, you know, we have a lot of people moving from all over. The lovely up north, right? To the south, looking for warm. Could you just talk a little bit about uh, like the event that we're doing in Carolinas, at, you know, on August 
third, fourth, and fifth, and just kind of talk about what you're going to be doing there. You and Noah are both going to be there. Yeah, guys. So I'm super excited to be part of the Money Tank in Raleigh. Um, again, I think mobile homes are so key. And again, I've been preaching this to everyone since 2007. Um, but I think now is like really the time people have started listening because of you know, the cost of everything going up, people are looking for affordable housing. And yes, Shauna, it is the fourth and fifth. I saw that. Um, I heard him say the third. It's the fourth and fifth in Raleigh, North Carolina, August 4th and 5th. We'll be there. I'm going to be talking and going more in depth about mobile homes and how to buy them and what to look for and do. Um, because I really believe wholeheartedly that if you are not investing in these, you should be, right? Like not everyone, I know single family homes, sometimes people think I've, I can't afford it. I'm afraid of that. It's too much investment, especially if you're in a market. A lot of times what I have is investors out of California. I just had a call with someone from Seattle looking for how affordable housing. They're like, I can't buy anything that cash flows. This makes zero sense. So we're going to be there teaching you how to do this. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. And I saw somebody here grew up in Dutch Fork and Prosperity. That's amazing. We just, we live on the lake. We just moved off the lake. We love Lake Murray. <laughs> oh, man, that's so awesome. But I mean, like, think of like, this ties in so perfectly just with everything. I mean, on Private Money Club, like the biggest problem with the site right now is deals are getting funded so fast. Maybe not the big, big deals, but I mean, if there's deals going up that are 150,000 or under, like, I'm embarrassed. Like I created this thing and I can't even fund deals right now. Like I, every deal that I'm emailing, like is already, you know, somebody's already jumped in and funded it. So like, we need more folks. Like we got 120 people left on here. We need these folks to go out and learn what you just taught about mobile home parks, because if they can go out and find mobile home parks for 30 to 50 grand, and let's just say renovate them for, I don't know, 10 to 20, how much how much would the rent be on the mobile home park roughly like what do you so, think the average yeah so if you're looking at like just an individual mobile home that you're buying like that on land i would tell you like on depending on your market area i mean we're ours are competitive i mean 850 850 to 1200 depending on your school district even more honestly i mean i'm seeing some go in the better school districts up to 14 to 15. if it's a three bedroom two bath i try to stick right to the three twos just like we would houses but we'll buy two twos that's a ridiculous return. I mean, you spend 40 to 70 grand to buy and renovate the unit to make it look really nice. You're renting from 850 to 1200. I mean, your, your carry costs can't be very much on something like that. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's too good to be true. And so what's, just, cool, what's cool, Chris, sorry to interrupt, you know, that could be a mobile home on land. Cause remember now you're running the land. If you're just buying the mobile home in someone else's park and you really build a relationship in a very good park where you can buy five, six, seven, eight houses, you might be able to be below 50, you know, 15,000 on those houses all in and still renting them. Now you, again, you have to pay them lot rent, but let's just hypothetically say your full rents are 850, right? A month, you're paying lot rent of 350. That's a cash flow of 500 and you put 15,000 in to buy one home. I mean, like where else can you buy something like that? You can't, it's just not possible. Initially going, coming into this, and, and my mind's always thinking one direction, but then all of a sudden, not, then I got to pivot. You know, I'm like, all right, let's 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 buy some mobile home parks. But honestly, like, I think what you're showing here is like, just find the mobile homes. Like, you, I'm embarrassed. Like, when my, my grandparents passed away, I had the ability, I could have bought the, you know, I could have bought the trailer and I could have bought it for like 10 grand. They ended up selling it, I think, for 12 grand. Um, it didn't even need anything. And I, could, I then could have bought that and, and rented that out. I just, I don't know why I didn't. We were flipping so many houses. It was just chaotic. But um, going to that mobile home park, that one I talked about, the village, and I'm just thinking here, like folks, oh, just yes. pick, in your mind, imagine a mobile home park in your area. One of the biggest things the mobile home park managers don't want is they don't want vacant houses that have grass growing and weeds growing and that they're not collecting lot rent. So if you went to the mobile home park managers like you, like you were teaching or, or you know people could kind of learn some more about this and, and you start saying, hey, listen, I, I want to buy as many, you know, as long as you guys will let me re-rent them out and maintain them, I want to buy mobile homes for anyone in here that you know selling them within this price range. And then that manager just calls you and just say, I'm a cash buyer. And for every one, like if it's the manager, for every deal you bring me, I'll give you 500 bucks. Like that's yes. your ticket right there. That's your ticket. Like they will, they will only call you $500 to a mobile home park manager. 
listen, like I'm not trying to make, you know, any thing about money, but that goes a long ways and they'll, they'll bring you deals. And then you take the deal, you put it on private money club, you raise the funds there, which would be honest to God, probably too easy, which is actually frightening to say as well, because there's just not enough deals on private money club. I mean, like Carson put a deal up for $40,000 at 16%. It didn't even, I don't even, I don't even know if it made it in an hour. He needs to mark that thing is, is, you know, closed, but Deals are flying off there at that price point. So like, think of the opportunity here, folks. Like, I don't care what part of the country you're in, East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, doesn't matter. Like you need to be doing this because a lot of you aren't doing this because you're like, oh, when I get the money to do this, when my policies, you know, approved, like you come up with all these excuses as to what you're waiting for before you do this. But why would you wait? Just go make the relationship, start talking to the mobile home park manager, start marketing, just talk to people. I mean, it's not hard to find. Go in the, I bet you, um, you go to like Facebook marketplace. I guarantee yes. you there's trailers on there. Like That's where we buy the bulk of ours. Yeah. And actually I'm seeing Antonio say something. He said, I'm in LA, California. Mobile home parks are crazy expensive. I probably have to invest out of state. I literally, I'm going to pull this up on my phone right now. And like, tell you something really amazing antonio i have a good friend that lives in orange county okay right one of the most expensive places um her father passed away unfortunately and she inherited his mobile home so literally what she did right called me what what should i do with this how much i said get an agent you know i pulled preliminary comps i said but look i'm not an agent in california get get with your agent she literally purchased this house okay she he owed thirty five thousand on it Okay, and it was in a park with lot rent. She ended up, and I'm looking at a repair estimator now. She put with lot rent and rehab thirty thousand into it, and she ended up selling it for one hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. So, Antonio, that is not true. You can do the deals. You just got to find the right parks, build the right relationship, and do that. That's what's cool about this. We think they're not in our market. Um, it's too expensive, but that's not true. I have coached students all over, and it's cool to see like you can do this. I don't know. And it, this is a very easy entry point into real estate. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of things in real estate, you know, and I like them all, but like this one just makes the most sense because no matter what, come hell and high water with the economy, with the recession, wherever we're going like this, people are going to live in these. They're, they're, this is not something we're going to have issues getting renters. I mean, you're probably actually going to get rent going up during recessionary time because more and more people will have to downgrade you know, and move into something that's more affordable and 850 to 1400 bucks a month. I mean, have, have any of you in your area, I live in Buffalo, New York. Let's not forget where I live. This is not the glorious place. It's not a bad place, but it is not glorious and it is not super expensive. You cannot find a one bedroom apartment in any kind of a decent area or school district for $1,400. You just can't. So People would like you saw those photos. Let's say you you actually took some pride and you renovated one of the mobile home parks that you bought in a mobile home park, right? Like you buy it in there, you renovate it, and people will rent it because they need the school district. I mean, I'm even thinking like out here in Clarence, which is like the best school district. I'm sure mobile home parks are expensive, but I mean, you could probably get them for 100, 120. But I mean, could you rent that for two grand a month? 15 to two grand? I mean, you're in the money, you're, you're cash flowing all day long with something like that. Exactly. And I really feel like the maintenance and repairs compared to a house are just so much cheaper too. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Like, and listen, I love my single family homes, right? We have multi-units. We do a lot of travel nurse renting. We've converted to that. We have short-term rental house downtown, but I just like this to diversify. And I think as a great investor, you have to be able to buy different investments and think differently. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Everybody that does that, it doesn't work out. I mean, it just, you need to know. Listen, when COVID hit, boy, we were short-term renting it up and banking on everybody. COVID hit, all of a sudden we had nobody for four months. I quickly told Noah, I said, we have to pivot. We're doing travel nurses. I called my friend. I said, you travel nurse, how much money did you make? Everybody was here on extreme COVID pay. We flipped everything. Whereas other investors were selling everything because they banked on student housing. They rented per room because we have the University of South Carolina. Well, guess what? No students were going to school. They were all home. So these people couldn't cash flow their properties. We ended up buying some of those subject to or on a lease option and reselling them. So like you have to know how to move with the market and you have to act. You can't just sit back.
selfishly, I'm like, you know, hey, how much money can I give you to buy these things? Right. You, know, <laughs> you, already have, you already have your your borrowers, but like everybody on here, 124 people now, like if we can just get some of you folks doing this, going through, you know, Christie's course, did you, I, I, didn't, I don't even know if we mentioned that. I mean, do you mentor people, teach people or? I do. I do. And I actually, um, I wrote during COVID because I've been saying this for years and years. I had a gazillion people ask me always. And I'm like, if I'm giving you a quick to answer how to find this, I'm disservicing you because you're still missing all the pieces. So during COVID, because we were trapped at home, I said, let's just record a course. So I did. I recorded a course. I sell it for next to nothing on my website because really I'm not looking to make a million dollars in my course. I don't care about that. Just know what you're doing. And then somehow that will come full circle, right? We'll invest together. Maybe you'll lend to me. That's a bigger picture. But then within the last year, what I was finding is people can listen to anything, but they, you know, this Chris, they don't take action unless you're pushing them. They need accountability. I do too. Right? Like I, I function the same. So we started doing a four week course virtual of here's the action items to do here's what to learn here's what to implement so then we did like a four-week challenge so that's that's kind of my thing now which i love doing is having that's people what you're going to be talking that. about in raleigh right at the money tank exactly event? Cause, exactly cause we got a really cool thing we put together folks in in money tank that kind of buttons up the whole kit and caboodle but you got to be there or at least be on the virtual to learn about what that offer is going to be. But I mean, put your website up, Christy. And, and, you know, for anyone that wants to kind of get the online course, like guys jump on this. I mean, it, I don't know what the cost is. And just so everybody knows, like we didn't even talk about like whether she had a course or not. I just know she teaches mobile home parks. And I just think it's a phenomenal business. And in coming into this, I'm not, I, all I was thinking about is like buying mobile home parks, which I know takes a lot of money, but I'm like, Hey, we got private money club. Like that's, not a problem. My mind is going wild. If you can't tell, I'm just thinking, oh my God, single mobile homes that you buy at the mobile home park, as long as they'll let you rent it. But why wouldn't they, if you're paying the lot rent? So like, it's just all this is clicking right now. And all I need is somebody who's got the time, the desire and the willingness to go out there and do these things, buy them, renovate them and manage them. Cause I don't have the time for that, man. I, I got the money. Like I'll lend the money on this. And I, I just think all of you really need to take this seriously. If you're looking for an entry point into real estate as to how to do it, like you've got all the tools right here in this network, 124 people. How many of you on here have money? I don't care if it's equity in your house. You got a home equity line of credit. You got an old 401k, an old IRA. Maybe you got a self-directed IRA. You got cash value in your life insurance. You just got lazy cash sitting in the bank, put I. How many of you have money to lend? Like, look at this. Like, there you go. That's awesome. Like, that's stupid. Like, like 50 grand lazy money right there, 20 grand. I mean, like, we're not talking about needing tons of money to do this. So like, if money is what's holding back the rest of you that didn't put I in there, like, what are you waiting for? Giddy up and go. All these folks that you're seeing, you know where they're at? They're in private money club. That's where they're at. They're just waiting for your deal. Matter of fact, like I'm on private money club right now, looking at the deals on here. And I'm just like, come on guys, post some deals. Like we have a shortage of deals on private money club. This might be the only time I'll ever say this, but we have too much money in private money club. Just putting it out there. If that doesn't wake some of you up to say, all right, I got to find some of these deals to get some of that money before it runs out on private money. I don't think it'll ever run out, but it, you definitely won't have, probably have lots of times in the history, in the future of private money club, where there's just this much more money than there is that many deals on private money club. So it is time, 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 time to get this done. Let's hit some of these questions. We got lots of good ones coming up. So Darlene was saying, I'm on a ranch in Whitman, Arizona. And I'm interested in land here and putting mobile home or manufactured homes on it. It's up and coming area with new highways to be and soon. Is this a good idea? Like how hard is the permitting for getting a mobile home park? So that sounds like a great idea, but will your county and city allow you to do that? So your first step is going to be like anything, just getting with them to see is this even an option? Because I know a lot of times we'll think, oh my gosh, I inherited this piece of land. There's this perfect piece of land. Here's what I'm going to do. Only to spend time dreaming this out and then go to the county and they shut it down in five minutes. So I would go to the city, county, talk to them individually. Honestly, it's probably cheaper to find a pre-existing park already in place or home because the septic's there, the sewer's there, because it sounds like this is probably out a little further. You might be on a well, not city sewer water. Maybe you are. You need to check into those things. So buying pre-existing and negotiating is probably cheaper than building new. And typically things are grandfathered in. So then you don't have to go back. Now 
now they might not allow this, but they did 20 years ago. It's already in place. Let's go with that. So it would be a matter of just checking. Okay. Jacob said, Christy, how about starting with one mobile home on land and expanding it by say 10 homes? Yes, I love that. Same, same philosophy, same idea. It used to be different regulations in our county. Now they will only allow two unless you're living in it, which, which I already live somewhere else. So I'm just planning investing. They will only allow you to have two mobile homes per acre, per septic and per well. So a lot of times you can't just go in and recreate and build a park. So the park I'm going to look at Friday, I'm super excited about because I'm pretty sure it's probably dilapidated and needs work and new homes brought in. But the cool part is it's already been zoned mobile home park. If you're in a rural area, they probably don't care. But if you're in an area where their progress is coming, which nowadays is everywhere, they're not going to let you put a park in. They're going to consider too many homes of a certain amount of park. Iknot, great question. So just all of you, you know, I'm sure many of you met Iknot at uh, the last Money Tank event out in Salt Lake. If you weren't there, you missed out. It was epic. He is now developing the next version of Private Money Club. So we we have hired his development firm to literally take Private Money Club into the, what would it be, the 29th or 30th century? I'm just kidding. But like literally we're going where no man or woman has ever gone before. This will be the first social media site where the you go to the private money club and everything you touch in private money club is designed to make you money. That's exactly what the new version is going to be. So folks, if you need money or you want to make money, I don't care if it's you, you need money or you want to make more money, private money club is going to have all sorts of ways to do that. He's the man taking us there. But anyway, get to his question. He said, is there depreciation on mobile homes? So, so can like on your taxes, can you depreciate them like a single family home? Yes, you can. Get with the right accountant to talk through that, right? But yes, you can. And Aknot, we got one right here. James Davidson, just hit him up. You know, I don't know if James is taking on new clients, but uh, he'd be the guy you'd talk to about that. Awesome. And then we got Jacob. Uh, Christy, does your team do financing? I'm in Northeast area of Columbia. Yes. Okay. So I, I, if it's a deal, you bring me and maybe it's something we could do, right? Or look at it from that term. Um, we do private money lend. Yes. To answer your question. But I will tell you, if you want like a more traditional lender to finance, I do have an option only in South Carolina of a lender that can finance mobile homes as investments. Perfect. So just reach out to me. I threw my website in the chat. And folks right now in the chat, I'm just going to throw it up there again. This is the offer for the Raleigh private money club money tank event today you get the discount so pmc 300 is the discount code drops the ticket price in half for general admission saves you 300 dollars on one of the vip tickets which gets you the evening of the third to come hang out with us front row seating and a whole bunch of other stuff so you can do the vip save 300 or get half off general admission and it also is a discount code to bring the virtual tickets down to 97 dollars but you know, you can always do virtual only if you can't get out there. You really, really need to be there. The venue's sick, then that's putting it lightly. I mean, Ed Milet did an event there, but uh, please, please take advantage of that. And guys, uh, selfishly, I'd love to see you live. Listen, I got a babysitter. I'm ready to network and see everyone. So I'm super excited. <laughs> take advantage of this. I understand this opportunity. I don't, I don't care if it's you buying the mobile home parks or you lending on the mobile home parks or the mobile homes. Like this is a massive opportunity. And the best way you're going to get into this community is money tank. Going to the event or joining the virtual part, portion of the event, either way, you're going to start getting around the people that have the money and the people that need the money. And that's the name of the game. You want to make money? You're on one of the two sides of that coin. So let's go to Ramona's question. Ramona said, uh, I actually talked to a mobile home park manager today. All right. They have five homes coming available to purchase, but they don't allow rentals. The lot rent is $6.29 a month to purchase. We have to fill out an application. I asked her, what they go for when renovated and she said only 27,900 does that sound like a good park to deal with what questions should i ask i mean i look at it they don't allow rentals so like what would you be doing with it so you're probably either gonna just purchase and flip it i'm guessing if they'll allow you to as an investor buy that and and this is pretty common so if you're buying in a park they're going to want you to do some sort of especially if it's a more mainstream park if it's mom and pop maybe not if it's more mainstream they're going to want you to do some sort of background check credit check right because they're thinking what if you don't sell this home right and you end up keeping it so two options if you're an investor will they allow you to flip it i guess is the question to you to a retail and buyer 
or will they allow you to own or finance that to someone? Because technically then they're not renting. So you need to ask them um, if they will allow you to own or finance or allow you to flip it. The numbers, I mean, the numbers are the numbers. So if it looks like you can buy it, I don't know what the price on each of those is and the renovations, you would have to run that. Um, in my program, I do have a deal analyzer for mobile homes. So you can kind of go through and do that to see lot rent and all those variables, but it could be something. It's just how flexible are they and, you know, then here's the other thing you have to think of too. If you're not renting and even if you are or selling on the back end, whoever you're qualifying to buy that home or rent to or owner finance to will also have to pass a qualification process. So make sure you could do a little, I call it not ghost ad marketing, but kind of like just running some trial ads to see if there's people out there with decent credit that are looking to buy homes. Because what you don't want to do is get a home that now you can't find a qualified buyer for and now you're stuck with it. So we got James Davidson said, due to the rental price point, do you find that the homes are not well maintained by the renters? Lower credit scores are common as renters at this price point. That's no that normally means smoking and clutter. That is a great question. And so this is interesting. I'll, I'll take this back to COVID and I'll tell you on average. So I also own a property management company um, as well. So we actually manage for a lot of out-of-state investors and military. We have a military base here. So what I find with our mobile homes is compared to our single family homes, that is not true. I think it's the quality and who you move in and qualifying them. And we have a pretty stringent qualification process. Credit, again, if you're renting, I don't really care about. Like there's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't have the best credit because all we're taught to do is leverage, right? So it's more so do they have a steady job how long have they been there how much income do they make i look at those factors going back to covid when everything was going on during covid we have more issues with our single family homes and people paying at higher rental price points than our mobile home people on average the majority of our mobile home tenants are there like eight to ten years and even when they move out the houses are no different than a single family home would be so that if that reassures you a little i think it's just the quality of person you put in I recommend if you are keeping a rental, regardless of who moves in, you spot check that place, have something in your lease agreement that every couple months you come in to make sure there's no leaks, there's no issues, all of that good stuff. And that keeps people on their toes. Uh, is this webinar recorded? Yes. So all of it's recorded and it will be up on my YouTube channel. The only thing I ask folks, and I don't ask a lot, is if you do go to my YouTube channel, which is at the Chris Noggle and want to watch this or any of my other videos, all I ask is that you subscribe, please. It costs you nothing but a click, but it definitely makes a huge difference for how many or for how we do everything on YouTube. We spend a lot of money there. So there's the link for YouTube. Just go there, subscribe, and you'll be notified. Every, and actually click the little alert, just like a little bell up top. Click the alert and that'll notify you when we put new videos up. And this video for this recording will be up probably by next week. All right, Christy, well, I think that's about it for the mobile home park section that was epic i thank you I, for I'm having just me nuts and i'm just ticked that some of these deals are not up on private money club because a lot of us would love to lend on something like this and this is why i'm here because i think this is awesome it just opens a whole nother door for people so thank you and i'm excited to see you in raleigh me too me too all right folks well i hope you enjoyed that uh yeah if you did pay the full price for the virtual without the discount don't worry we'll get it taken care of on the back end just again, Shauna at chrisnoggle.com. So between Shauna and Raj, they'll get you all situated on your tickets. Uh, we're not here to take advantage of anybody, but we'll definitely get you squared away and get everything that we just made promised to you. It'll just it'll be a bit clunky because I uh, didn't plan this out very well. But anyway, you guys benefit, and I can't wait to see all of you out there at Money Tank. And with that being said, Christy, thank you so very much for joining us today. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you wanna know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.